Praise be to your name, Lord Jesus. By the grace of Jesus Christ, my brethren, let us read from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16, and verse 13. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the, man, for the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen. Our Lord with his twelve disciples is on the course, on the path that God had appointed for them, preaching to all men and revealing the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven teaching by bringing to all people a new doctrine, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which no man had ever heard before, and finally setting people free from the oppression of the devil, where they found themselves captured righteously, rightfully, due to their sins and their transgressions. So he walks with his twelve disciples. And the word of God says, When he came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples an important question, which answer needs revelation from God. And if you have this revelation of God, then all things change, and new conditions and new situations are created in your life. So he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? People who live on earth, and you can hear them. What do they say? Who do they say that I am? And the disciples answered. I said, someone else says you are John, the Baptist. Someone else says you are Elijah, the prophet. Others say that you are Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And now the question becomes personal. 
But you, who do you say that I am? And immediately Simon, the son of Jonah, which Simon means hey, he turns and he says, you are the Messiah, which is misinter which interpreted Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the Lord answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this thing to you, that is no man, but my Father who is in heaven. So this man has an astounding revelation in his heart. Now the question is, why did this revelation come to him? Why did the Father reveal to him that this man who was 30 or 31 years old standing in front of him, who was born in Bethlehem, and his father, his supposed father was a carpenter, and his mother Mary. Why did God reveal to this person, not to the rest of the disciples, that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God? A revelation that will bring the great overturning in the life of Peter. Because immediately after that, after this revelation, this testimony of yours, I, Jesus, say to you that you are no longer Simon, you're no longer Hay, but you are Rock, you are Peter. <laughs> and indeed upon this rock, I will build my church. Who was this? He was just a fisherman. He was a fisherman like so many others. But this fisherman had something special. When Jesus went to John the Baptist and he was baptized in water, there were two disciples there. One of them was Andrew, the brother of Peter, and someone else. And when Jesus approached John the Baptist, John the Baptist said, This is the Lamb of God. And after their meeting, he goes to Peter. Andrew goes to Peter and he says, We have found the one that we were looking for. Because the one who searches finds. He who does not search does not find. We have found the Messiah who is interpreted Christ. We have found Christ, the one that we were looking for, the one that the scriptures speak about, the one that we were seeking. We have found him. And Peter heard, he followed, and he went close to the Lord. And he stood in front of him and said, Is it he or is it not he? And the Lord told him, Jesus of Nazareth told him, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. But you will be named Cephas, which is interpreted Peter. This was the first meeting that they had. Then he left. At some point, all night long they were fishing with his brother Andrew and the others, and they had caught no fish. So in the morning... They were washing their nets. They were preparing them for the, next, for, the ne for the next catch. And then suddenly Jesus comes there. Whom they said he was the Messiah. He may be the Messiah. He stood before the, ship, the boat on the, on the beach. And a great multitude was listening. And because it wasn't easy for him. He approached Peter and he said. Peter, let me get into your boat. I want to preach from your boat and everyone to listen to me. But Peter didn't go there so the multitudes can hear him, but so Peter can listen to him. Because he is searching for him. He has to give revelation to Peter. And Peter permits him. And after he finishes his sermon, he turned to Peter now and he said, and it's personal, and I really like this, and the personal relationship that Christ creates with man. 
He says, now turn your boat and go into the deep waters and throw your nets down again. And now Peter is before the one who may be the Messiah. And he tells him, Lord, all night long that we were fishing, we were fishing and caught nothing. But you're telling me to go now in the middle of the day where no one can catch fish. If I listen to you and obey you, first of all, I will destroy my nets that I've already prepared for the fishing tonight. I will ruin my nets, which I prepared with so much care and diligence. And I'll waste my nets in a fi on a fishing trip that will have no results. But if I go fishing tonight or tomorrow night, I'll catch fish like I did the other nights. So now he's standing before the Word of God. Before the Word of Jesus Christ. Like all of us today. We stand before the Word of Jesus Christ. And he's telling us, take your boat out into the deep, out into the deep again. Start over again. But it isn't the appropriate time. There's no human logic in this. Christ does not need your logic. He needs your faith in your obedience. Because he wants to reveal to you. Because you seek him. Because you ask and you say, what should I do, Lord? Should I do this? Should I do that? What do you say, Lord? And Christ came to answer Peter's calling. And Peter was convinced. He did not believe that he was the Messiah yet. But he, be, he tried. He tried out his word. He has tried everything. The word of Christ alone he had not tried yet. That is the only thing he hadn't tried in his life. So he turns around and he says, Even though that makes no sense, even though it's noon, even though you can't catch fish in the middle of the day, Upon your word, I will take the, she the ship, the boat, out into the deep and cast my nets. The result. God, who does whatever he wants, commanded in the middle of the day all the fish to go and fall into Peter's nets. Hallelujah. Because, my brethren, we're not dealing with human wisdom. We ha we're dealing with the wisdom of God. Because the word of God is the power of God that saves those who believe it. When he saw this, there he was convinced. He said, my, my, I'm a sinner. Get away. Leave. Leave. Get out of my ship. I'm a sinner. Get away. Get out of my ship. And again, God speaks. And he says, you are... A fisherman of fish. I will make you a fisher of men. So he knelt down and he said. You are the Christ. The son of the living God. Now I will follow you. Now I will follow you and only you. Now I will not think what I must do. I will only think of Lord tell me what I have to do. I'm changing my logic. I'm changing my thought. And what does the Lord tell him now? Now leave everything and follow me. And his life changed. There goes the fishing. There goes his family. Not that he abandoned his family. But now he followed Christ. He was a disciple of Christ. And first of all in Antioch. All the, all the Christians were named disciples of Christ. So today let us also say. We are disciples of Christ. Are we my brethren? Are we? We do not want another teacher because Christ says, do not name teacher somebody else because one is your teacher and that is Christ. Don't name somebody else to be your professor because one is your professor and that is Christ. That is God and it is Christ. Peter said today, I'm becoming a disciple of Christ. Will you become a disciple of Christ? Well, then God will make you an apostle of Christ. God does great things, doesn't he? The first question. Do you want to be a disciple of Christ? The second question. Do you want God to use you as his co-worker? And the third question that is more important. 
Do you want to be governed by the Holy Spirit and only by the Holy Spirit? This is revelation. This is a revelation for Peter, but for us as well. We want new things, other things. And so, when the Lord asked, they, what do you say that I am? Now, Peter has revelation from God. He said, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And now Jesus gives him a promise. A promise to the man who made this decision. And I tell you with all certainty in the name of Jesus Christ that God gives promises. Jesus gives promises to everyone who makes this decision. Today and every day. And as long as it is named today. Today, therefore. And for as long as it is named today. Because today is a welcome day. Today is a day of salvation. Do not harden your heart as you hear and I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Today, let us say, here I am, Lord. I'm small, insignificant, wretched, and useless, but your disciple. Hallelujah. But you, my teacher, you, my guide, you, my Lord and God. And the Lord says, from now you are no longer Simon. We, hay that is taken left and right with every wind of doctrine. But today you are a rock. Today you are a stone. And upon this stone I will build my church. I will use you for the salvation of your family. I will use you. Because it is the latter days and Christ wants to save. He wants all people to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. So Christ will use you as a rock. And upon this rock he will build. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against this church and against you. There goes Hades. No more Hades. He's done. Now we have life and that in abundance and inheritance of eternal life. And I will also give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Which is the word of God. Which is the name of Jesus Christ. Which is the truth in relationship to the light. Which is darkness in relationship with light. Which is the wisdom of God. In regard to human wisdom. And whatever you bind upon the earth. Will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose upon the earth. Will be loosed in heaven. And to whom is he saying? He's saying it to the fishermen. And you find a theologist. Someone who knows. He, he says this to the illiterate man. He doesn't want your education. He wants your faith. Your obedience. And your seeking of his face. He did not choose Esau who was strong and, and, and a, a big man. But he chose Jacob who was soft, tender and sweet. Hallelujah. But just think about this my brother. If I say the things that I'm saying now are true. If they're true. And God is truly inviting you. He's inviting you to make you a rock. If this is the case. And you do not accept his invitation. What a shame will that be. It would be such a shame. Christ, Christ passed by next to you. You heard him. And you left. Christ came before your boat. And he told you. Can I come into your boat? And he said no I'm busy. Christ came and told you, take the, the ship out into the deep. And you say, what are you saying now? I'm going to tell you what, what and how it must be done. It isn't the time for fishing now. Tonight when I'm going to go out fishing again, come with me and you'll see how many fish we're going to catch. How was this boat? It was, it was empty. It didn't have one fish. Nothing. And how was it filled within three, three hours only? 
Christ did it. Just think about this thing. Think about your life being empty and within a few hours, Christ can fill it with fish. Hallelujah. To tell you the truth, I have great joy today. Because I say to the Lord and we say to the Lord, Amen, Lord Jesus. Bring this change in my way of thought and my mind. But another change is needed also. From the moment that he revealed to him, then he shows him the difficulty. Because we said, whoever wants to live godly will suffer persecution. He said, now, now I have to go to Jerusalem. They have to arrest me and torture me and put me to death. But praise be to God, because on the third day, my father will raise me up again. And Peter, a man, with revelation, but still a man, felt pity for him. He said, Mama, no, no, no. Lord, no. We hope in you. We'll go, to, we'll go together. What is this that you're saying? You're going to die now? No. And you know what Christ told him? The one that he said earlier, you are Peter, he said to him now, get behind me, Satan, because you are my offense. You're not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of man. You are an offense to me. Now there's a different personality in Peter that the Lord is showing. A man who is mindful of the things of men. And he's sad, he's sorrow, he doesn't want trials, he doesn't want the crucifixion, he doesn't want the resurrection either. But the Lord told him, I have to go. So get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. And we are an offense when we are mindful of the things of men and not mindful of the things of God. And we are vulnerable to the devil so he can use us. Even if God has blessed us, when we despise the birthrights, when we despise the blessing of God, the Word of God, when we despise the revelations of God, when we despise the fact that Jesus Christ is the Lord and we're afraid of people, what they will say, what they will do to us, what, what can man do to you, my brother, when God is with you? We have to understand this thing. Because the whole secret of the devil is to terrify you. But they'll swear at you. They'll curse you. If they curse me, God will bless me. But they will accuse you. They may accuse me, but God will bless me. But they will harm you. They may open a pit, but they will fall in it. And God will lift me up onto the mountain. Why? Why? Because I want to be mindful of the things of God. I do not want to be mindful of the things of men. So help me, Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus. I want to be mindful of your things. I do not want to be mindful of the things of men. But give me your wisdom. Give me your mind frame. Give me your teachings. Your revelation. Do you want it? Well, go to your room and ask for it from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you trust in the Word of God. Because we trust in the Word of God, because the Word of God is the truth, because the words of Christ are yes and amen, for that reason I want to be a disciple of Christ and Christ to teach me with personal teachings in my room. And there in your room, don't be afraid. An angel camps around with all his, a with all his, those who fear God. And it isn't only angels that protect us and we thank God and give glory to him for his angels. Because if Christ would open our eyes, we will see this room full of the angels of God. But the most important thing is that among us is Jesus Christ. He's the son of the living God. Is Christ who is our Lord and our God. And we trust His words. And we seek the voice of the Holy Spirit 
his guidance. And we need his wisdom. And we condemn and reject our own knowledge, our own experience, and our own wisdom. Our strength even. For that reason, our Lord turns to Peter and he says, If someone wants to come after me, to become a vessel of choice, my servant, my slave, my disciple, forgive me, then first of all, he has to reject his own wisdom, his knowledge, his experience, his whole self. Do not present your opinion before God and your own wisdom. God doesn't like this. Humble yourself before God. Don't be a teacher of Christ because you will come into condemnation. Be a disciple of Christ so that God may bless you. First of all, he must deny himself. It isn't easy. You know who I am? I say, you don't know me well. That's what people say. You know who I am? You know, my brethren, who we are? We're empty tin cans. What are our abilities? Christ says, without me, you are able to do nothing. Who? All of you. All of us. You can do nothing. For that reason, deny yourself and ask for God to clothe you in Christ. For Him to put Christ on you. You do not speak, but Christ to speak. Do not prepare yourself what to say, what to do, what to think of, because this is a tremendous mistake. I think of the prophecy and then prophesy. No, that's wrong. It's a mistake. I think of what I'm going to do and then I do it. At that hour, first of all, the Holy Spirit will teach you what you have to say. And when there's need, at that moment, the Holy Spirit will take your mouth and speak to you speak through you and you won't be the one speaking but for this to happen you have to deny yourself so it's not enough you have to be mindful of the things of God you have to pick up your cross without cross there is no resurrection so lift your cross and then only can you follow Christ if someone wants to follow me he cannot follow me unless he denies himself and picks up his cross because whoever wants to save his life with his own initiative, then he will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me, then he will find true life, eternal life. Because what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You may have abilities and to win over the whole world, but what will you gain in the end? What will you gain? A lot of money, a few money, uh, less money, a lot of houses, yachts. If you lose your soul, your life here on earth will be hell, but also in eternal life, you'll be in perdition. So, let us leave our thoughts. Let us leave, my dear brethren, the claiming. And let us turn our eyes to the Word of God and to the Holy Spirit. It is the only thing reliable. Don't trust in dreams. Don't trust anything. First, we must trust the Word of God and then the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Does God not speak through, vi through dreams? Many times, but not continuously. In the abundance of dreams, there is the thoughts of the heart. If he shows you a dream now and a dream a uh, year later, then yeah, okay. But he says, the word of God says in the, in the, that your, your, the elders will see dreams. Be aware of deception and, and lies, my brother. The only true thing is the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. And the Apostle Paul explains this. He says, You are dead because of your transgressions and your iniquities. But God, according to His great mercy, regenerated us unto a living hope. 
Those who were dead, he regenerated them and made them alive. But alive in the presence of God. For that reason, my dear brothers and sisters, may we leave and God be with us. Let us deny ourselves. Let us forget our personal initiatives and activities, everything. Let us always begin with the Word of God and with seeking the Holy Spirit. And then God with all certainty will give us revelations. Revelations that are safe and secure which will lead us to the great great changes that Christ will bring into our life. Amen.